If you've watched Mindhunter on Netflix, you should know about the Behavioral Science Unit in the FBI that tries to understand the psychology of serial killers and predict their criminal activities. However, behavioral science can actually help us understand and predict many human behaviors, from subscribing to Netflix to tackling climate change. Although it may seem purely qualitative, where we just talk to people and observe their reactions, what if I tell you there's a math concept known as fuzzy logic that can help us quantify people's thoughts and use numbers to predict people's behaviors? Well, in this video, we have invited Dr. Constantine Spandagas, a double engineering doctorate who is using mathematical models to do exactly that. So, Constantine, what can you tell us about fuzzy logic? Hey, Conan, thank you for the invitation today. Well, fuzzy logic is a concept that we use to reflect people's subjective truth, the truth that is based on one's unique perspective or feelings. It is an extension of the traditional or conventional or binary logic in math where things are either zero or one, or either 0% or 100%, if you will. One good example would be the variables weekday and weekend and the day, let's say, Friday. So, of course, in the binary logic, we will say that Friday is 100% weekday and 0% weekend, right? But is this really how people always feel about things and understand things? I would say not always. For instance, for me, yeah, of course, Friday is a weekday, but you know what? At the same time, it kind of feels like a weekend because I have a good mood. I don't have to work the following day, so I can go out for a drink with my friends after work. So fuzzy logic will come here and translate this thought I just made into numbers. And it would say, for instance, that for me, Friday is 70% weekday, but at the same time, it's also 30% weekend. For you, Conan, it might be 80% weekday and 20% weekend at the same time, because you're a different person with a different perspective. And fuzzy logic can do exactly that. It can capture a person's or a group of people's unique perspective about things. I see. So how can we actually put this into practice? Say, if we want to use behavioral science to predict whether people would subscribe to Netflix, for example, what should we do? Well, the first thing to do would be to get an understanding through behavioral science of what are the most important factors behind each decision. In the example that you just mentioned, when the decision is whether to subscribe to Netflix or not, of course, the subscription price will be a very important factor. And how does fuzzy logic come into play? I mean, isn't voting dollars a month for Netflix pretty cheap already? What do you mean by pretty cheap? You see, it really depends on your individual circumstances, like your income. I'm a big Marvel fan, by the way, so let me use some Marvel characters as examples. Let's take Tony Stark, who is a genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. The price of $14 for him can be characterized as 100% very cheap and 0% expensive. But for Peter Parker, who is a student, hey everyone, the same price can be characterized as 20% normal price and 80% expensive. So with fuzzy logic, we can create a mapping that shows to what extent a particular price is considered cheap or expensive and by whom. And we call this mapping a membership function. So do you mean different people would have different mapping or membership function because they have different thoughts? Exactly. So Tony would have a membership function that shows what its price means to him. And Peter would have another membership function that shows what its price means to him. And they will both have a set of if then rules, which might be the same or might be different. Here, just to keep things simple, let's say that they have the same set of rules. For example, the first rule would be, if something is cheap or very cheap, then I will most probably buy. The second rule would be, if something has a normal price, then I will probably buy. And the third rule would be, if something is expensive or very expensive, then I will most probably not buy. If we take the value of $14 and we put it to Tony's membership function, 
we can see that it corresponds to the linguistic value very cheap. Then, according to the rules, Tony will most probably buy. I want one. No. But if we take the value $14 and we put it to Peter's membership function, we can see that it corresponds most to the linguistic value expensive. Then, according to his rules, Peter will most probably not buy. No, 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 no. So is this like translating people's psychology into math functions? And if certain conditions meet their criterion, then they would make the corresponding decisions. You can say so. But remember, in this example, we just want to keep things simple, right? So we have only one decision factor, which is the price. In reality, we'll have more complicated problems with more factors. But simply knowing whether Tony or Peter would subscribe doesn't really help Netflix that much, right? I mean, how can a company generalize this result and actually use it in their business model? Well, um, the output of the example that we just described, which is in fact is a small fuzzy logic model, can help Netflix to understand what is the probability of each person buying the subscription. Then if Netflix want to sell to both Peter and Tony, they need to come up with a price that will make each one of them most probable to buy. And finally, if let's say they want to have a national strategy on their price, they should understand how many Peters and how many Tonys are out there. All right, I think I can grasp the basic concept of fuzzy logic with the example you gave, but I do want to ask, can it also be used for bigger problems? I mean, maybe something more important than Netflix and chill. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, sure. Of course, we can use it for uh, bigger problems. For instance, we can use the same logic to understand how people make decisions that have to do with the sustainable use of energy. And of course, these kind of decisions are of significant importance when, when it comes to mitigating climate change and other global environmental problems. And I know modeling these types of decisions is actually your research focus as well, right? That is correct. Well, in the next video, we're going to talk about how Constantine puts fuzzy logic into practice and actually use it to simulate energy efficiency and conservation behaviors of a whole city, which happens to be my hometown, Hong Kong. So check out the next video right now, and I will see you there.